Crowds lined the streets of Jerusalem, pressing forward, eager to catch a glimpse of Jesus. As he came into view, they praised him as if their very cries could crown him king. Many in the crowd were curious. They had heard that Jesus could heal the sick and raise the dead. Others had witnessed these miracles firsthand. Wedding guests who celebrated with the water he turned into wine. Friends who looked on as he brought Lazarus back to life. Lepers who saw the disease vanish from their bodies. And many who sat on a hillside as the teacher fed thousands with the lunch of one child. His own disciples had seen him calm the raging sea with a wave of his hand. Amazed like everyone else, they wondered, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the seas obey him.
It was now Passover evening. Jesus knew that his time with the disciples was growing short. The one they called Master knelt before them like a servant and washed their feet. Follow my example, he said. Serve as I serve you now, that the world might know me through you. Then he stood and blessing the bread and cup said, this is my body, this is my blood. I give them for you, eat, drink, and remember. When they had finished the meal, they went to a garden called Gethsemane. There, as Jesus knelt to pray, he agonized over the suffering that lay ahead. In the silent darkness of the night, the son cried out to his father, If there is any other way, please take this cup of death from me. Nevertheless, thy will, not mine. Be done.
As Jesus finished praying, the silence in the garden was broken, led by Judas, a group of men armed with swords and clubs, arrested Jesus and brought him before the high priest for interrogation. When he had been questioned, the soldiers beat him and mocked him. The next morning, they took him to be judged in Pilate's court, where a large group of people had gathered outside. Among them, those who had praised Jesus as king now rejected him and demanded that he be sentenced to death. When Pilate had conceded to their demands, the soldiers led Jesus away to be beaten once again. They placed a robe around his shoulders and a crown of thorns upon his head, mocking and striking him. Then they led him through the streets to be crucified, nailed to a cross for all to see. He became the ultimate Passover lamb, sacrificed for the sins of the world. In his final moments, he looked out at those responsible for his death and cried, Father, forgive them, for they do not understand what they do. Then once and for all time, he paid the penalty of death in full. Thank you.
In the darkness that engulfed the afternoon sky, the earth shook and groaned. It was as if creation itself were overwhelmed with grief. Many of the bystanders fled, perhaps fearing God's wrath. Others were unable to move, rooted to the ground that still held the cross firmly in place. As they looked upon the face of the one they had betrayed, they realized, too late, the gravity of what they had done. Surely, this was the Son of God. The Savior, long awaited by generations, had been rejected and shamed, scorned and beaten, then crucified by the very ones he came to save. Like those who stood before the bruised and battered man on the cross, we too must realize he came to save us. He came to save us all. And together, we can only bow our heads and say, Hallelujah! What a Savior! As evening approached, a man named Joseph asked for the body of Jesus and took it to his own new tomb. There he wrapped the body in linen and rolled a heavy stone to seal the entrance. Now the chief priests had heard Jesus say that he would be raised from the dead. They feared that the disciples might steal his body and claimed that he had been resurrected. So at their urging, Pilate dispatched guards to secure the tomb. Early on the morning after the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb along with two other women. There was a violent earthquake, and an angel of the Lord came down, rolled back the stone from the tomb, and sat upon it. The guards were so afraid that they fell to the ground, 
like dead men. Then the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Go quickly now and tell the disciples. Racing back from the tomb, their feet could barely keep pace with their eagerness to share the news. Their once heavy hearts were now light with joy. With every step, they must have repeated the words over and over again. Jesus is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. The scriptures tell us that one day we will stand before the throne with the angels and the saints who have gone before us. There, unable to withhold our praise, every tongue will confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Heaven will have but one song and all of creation will sing it. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth, wisdom and strength. Worthy is the Lamb to receive honor and glory and praise forever and ever. 
Amen, amen, and amen. This shall be our song for all eternity.